You spoke about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My question is this. What would you do if you got the chance to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You know, I, Mufti Mink knows that I have a policy sometimes that I do not like to speak in front of, you know, learned mashayikh, scholars. And, and I've seen that in the life of my own teachers, how they respect their, their teachers and they prefer silence over, you know, speaking. So let alone speaking or doing anything in front of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I will, uh, I think I would be just, being in his presence is a, is a big deal in, 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 in the, on its own. So that would be a, the honor. May Allah gather us with him. Ameen. Mufti Ismail, I'd like to extend the question to you. What would you do or say if you met the Prophet ﷺ? But he answered it. <laughs> <laughs> MashaAllah, he said that he doesn't feel, meaning, I know he always tells me, when I'm speaking, please don't sit in the front. He always tells that to me. And today when I was speaking, he was seated right here. <laughs> and even though the lights were turned off, but you know, his head was just shining. <laughs> so, so, mashallah. Sheikh, you're covering it. You're covering your shiny head as well. <laughs> <laughs> don't sell my secrets. Okay. Um, no, mashallah. Let's get a little bit more serious. Barakallah fiqh. I think it would be overwhelming to meet with Muhammad Sallallahu is actually an, a, uh, one of uh, the aims, the dreams that I have, inshallah. And I'm sure it will happen, inshallah. And the same with all of us. May Allah bless us with that. Uh, it will be overwhelming. And I think I would have to wait for that time to see what happens thereafter. Uh, may Allah make it easy. Yeah, that's Amen. all I'm going to say. Amen. Ustaz Wahaj, I'd like to extend the same question to you with the same mic. Bismillah wa salatu ala Rasulullah. I got this question in Philippines a week ago, uh, me and Ustaz Wahaj, and uh, for a week I've been struggling with it. Like, what would I do if I met the Rasul, you know? Sallallahu uh, alayhi wa sallam. I think I would be very shy. Like, I, I genuinely think. Uh, what do you do in front of the Rasul? Like, you know, I think I would want to look at him, but would be shy to look at him. Uh, would want to hug and kiss him, but uh, you know, where am I and where is he? And uh, may Allah Rabbul Azza resurrect us with him. May Allah Rabbul Azza give us the pleasure of uh, of being with him and seeing him. Um, there's a little couplet I quote regularly. They say, "Ahzanu qalbi la tazul hatta ubashir bil qabul." وَأَرَى كِتَابِي بِالْيَمِينِ وَتَقَرَّ عَيْنِي بِالْرَسُولِ May Allah Rabbul Azza resurrect us with the Rasul. Amen. Which verse of the Qur'an sticks out to you the most and why? Okay, which verse of the Qur'an sticks out for me the most? Actually, like I said and like I would always say uh, every time I'm asked about favorite verses or uh, every time you read the Qur'an there are different verses that actually uh, stick out because of the problems you may be going through or the situation you may be facing at that particular time so different verses stick out but in general I can tell you there is a surah that moves me the most two surahs short ones one is al-duha and the other one is surah al-sharh wal-duha wal-layli idha saja ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala that verse itself ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala wala al-akhiratu khayrun laka min al-ula wala sawfa yu'atika rabbuka fatarda so the two verses ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala and wala sawfa yu'atika rabbuka fatarda they they stick out the most for me they they impact upon me they make me ponder deeply every time i read them and what they mean just for the benefit of everyone where the Prophet uh, revelation had stopped for a time and then he thought maybe Allah is upset with me maybe you know Allah has left me forsaken me so Allah revealed a verse to him to say Allah has not forsaken you he's not upset with you it happens to all of us certain things happen negatively sometimes we struggle sometimes we struggle for a long time and we think maybe Allah is upset with me and perhaps you know 
And then you read this verse and you say, no, he's not. He's not. You know, he's not upset with me. And he hasn't left me. And then uh, a verse down, Allah says, uh, And very soon Allah will give you so much until you become happy. So you might not have it right now and you will get it. So sometimes we want something, we... You know, we look forward to things and they don't come our way. And Allah says, hang on, it's going to come. Something quick I can share with you. I went to Tanzania many years ago, many years ago. The people from the University of Zanzibar had invited me. And these were youngsters. They had very little resources. And I had traveled from Zimbabwe to Kenya. And when I spoke to them, and then they had a vote of thanks after the two days or three days. And I remember the brother, his name is Saeed. Now we are friends. It's been years. It's been more than 10, 12 years. And he just said, we have, uh, we have something to offer you, and that is a verse of the Qur'an. And I'm thinking, you know, when you have a, when you have a, a vote of thanks, people come and give you a plaque, they give you a gift, they give you something, uh, they'll give you uh, something that you can take back home. And he says, we have a verse of the Qur'an uh, to give you, uh, and, and that is, وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى He says, indeed, Allah will bless you so much until you are happy. And that was the first time in my life that a different meaning, a different, you know, part of that verse dawned on me. And it stuck with me ever since and it's really moved me. And so that surah and the next surah is all about difficulty and, and, and hardship. I think I can invite everyone, if you have a moment, to go and look at those two surahs. They really soothe me. They bring about a lot of calmness. I just have to read them and I'm just blown away. Mashallah. The same question extended to you. Which verse of the Quran sticks out to you the most and why? Yeah, the, there is, there is a, one verse that always always on mind. and I always recite it. I even recited it today during my talk. And that is, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ uh, Tell my servants, tell them, O Muhammad, those who have transgressed against themselves, who have sinned day and night, tell them, despair not from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah forgives all sins. Uh, Indeed, He is the most forgiving, most merciful. And I think for two reasons. I, I like that verse so much for two reasons. It reminds me of my ugly history. And it gives me that hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive whatever we have committed in the past. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who will be forgiven, insha'Allah. Ameen. 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 Hajj. Yeah. I like both of those verses. Um, but I am in education, and uh, part of what we deal with is, uh, is discipline and ta'deeb of, of, you know, the younger generation. And um, so because, you know, it's, it's your field, you kind of look for it uh, in the Quran, and, and no one disciplines like Allah, Rabbul Aizah. So one of the topics uh, that, the, that the Arabs had a problem with, uh, you know, when the Prophet was preaching was with this issue of resurrection. You know, we will die, we will turn to bone, the bones will turn to dust, your Lord will bring us up from, from dust. And one of them, you know, went and thought and did a lot of thinking and then came up with an amazing experiment, took all uh, decaying bones, you know, and came to the you know, in front of the majesty of the Rasul and crushed it like this. And he goes, you're saying he will give life to this? You know, in his head, he thought like, you know, I've reached nirvana, you know. What does, look, look what I do, what an experiment. Like, how are you going to say that? So the Quran responds, oh, in a way befitting the majesty of the Dhul Arsh al-Majid and Fa'alul lima yurid. He says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِن نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُّبِينٌ وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ So he says, doesn't, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنسَانُ Doesn't man see that we created him from a, from a droplet of, you know, nutfa, something so low that if it falls on your clothing, you won't pray with it. And then that same thing made from that, grows so arrogant that he comes to, to argue with us and and he wants to give examples for us and he forgets what he was made from 
You know, قُلْ يُحْيِيهِ And he, he is saying, مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعَظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمِ Who will give life to the dead bones once they, they have decayed. قُلْ Tell him, يُحْيِيهِ الَّذِي أول, uh, أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ The one that created it from nothing, he will bring it back again and he is able to. So to myself, that poor person, you know, thought he has reached nirvana, enlightenment. You know, I have found life. And then Allah, Rabbul Izza, brings him to his reality just with, with a couple of sentences. As someone in behavior management, it stands out to me now. <laughs> Finally, Ustad Wahaj, I will stay with you, inshallah. You spoke about Jannah and what a beautiful place Jannah is. The final question from myself to you is this. What are you looking forward to the most in Jannah? Whatever's in the tent. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> That's it, khalas. <laughs> wow, mashallah. Okay. What am I looking forward to in Jannah? I can tell you something. I'm just looking forward to Jannah. Then I'll decide once I'm there what I want. The reason I say that is I've get, I have a lot of people asking me more than, more than two, three hundred questions over the last few years. Will my cat be in Jannah with me? <laughs> and I'm intrigued at the love that the, the people who send these questions have for their cats. And I know the answer, but I can't break their hearts. <laughs> so I have to tell them, the Almighty promises you, and He promised all of us, and this is a serious matter. He says, when you get to paradise, you will have whatever you want, how you want it, when you want it, in the way that makes you happy. Without changing what you want, even with, by a speck. So I sit and I think people have husbands they don't like. People have wives they don't want. <laughs> people, have, people have animals. People have so much. And I think to myself, what's going to happen to them? They just need to know, please get there. Then you're going to see what's going to happen. <laughs> you will be amazed. We are thinking with our little brains of humankind here. When you get there, you're going to have the super brain, which is totally perfect. You're going to have the existence that's blemishless, no Photoshop, it's real, you know? It's real. You don't have to try and change things. No makeup, it's actually fact. That's who you are. And if you want to be someone different while you're thinking you're changing, if someone, someone wants to see you different, they'll be seeing you different while you're seeing yourself different. I can't even explain. So then I tell them, you know what? Please just get to paradise first. Talk about your cat there. If you think about the cat when you're there, I promise you, you'll get the cat. But the question is, will you think about your cat? Yes, I definitely will, that's what they say. But the answer is, hang on, it reminds me of one thing. Sorry, I'm taking a, a, one more minute. It reminds me of one thing. I said it in the Philippines, and, and I might have said it again elsewhere. Say it again for a fourth time. You know, in 1960, we used to have Mercedes, right? And it used to say 280S at the back. And we used to be excited, oh wow. Not that I was born at the time, but I'm talking of a 1960, <laughs> I'm talking of the 1960 model, 1970, then you had a series that came, and the guys were saying, I can't afford this milk, but inshallah, in Jannah, Allah will give me this. The same guy, the same guy, 15, 20 years down the line, if he was to be given that Mercedes, he wouldn't want it. <laughs> so if I decide now what I want in paradise, Maybe 10 years later, I won't want it. The Ferraris and the Porsches, the 911 that was so famous when I was young, today people don't look at it, I promise you. They wouldn't want it. But it would be so cheap for me to decide, hey, look at this S-Class, look at how beautiful. Allah, give me this in Jannah. 10 years from now, I won't want it myself here in the world. Forget about Jannah. Because the model, is gonna, the model is gonna change, everything changes. So this goes to show my brothers and sisters, it's a fact. When we say we want something in Jannah, this is what I'm gonna do in Jannah. You know what, forget about all of that. Just prepare for Jannah. Just make sure you are there. Once you're there, trust me, you will never be let down. People say, if men get this, what am I gonna get? I promise you, you're gonna get better than men. You know, I always say, uh, you know, the, the, it, it's a question that a lot of people don't like, but I, I want to raise it, okay? They say, so the men are going to get women. So what are the women going to get? I say, they're going to get men. What else? I mean, <laughs> what else? I mean, I, it's really so. So when you get there, I don't want to talk about the details. Please, let's get there. When we get there, we will definitely be the most pleased. So 
don't ask me, what do you want to do there? Please, I just want to get there. If I'm there, I'm a happy man. Inshallah, I see you guys there. Say, Amin. Inshallah. I'm a visual person. I'm a visual person. I, I want to have some stuff. Yeah, I, I, I always dream stuff in Jannah that I'm going to do. And actually, the person who encourages me to do that is one of my mashaykh. We were dropping home, uh, him off the airport uh, when I was in Hong Kong. And he was like making dua for us. Thank you for accommodating me and stuff. And then he said, Inshallah, when we get to Jannah, I'm inviting you for a barbecue meal underwater. <laughs> underwater. And then we say, how this is uh, possible. He said, didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Lakum ma tasha'una fiha wa ladayna mazid. You will have whatever you wish for. And we have even more things beyond our imagination. But there are th certain things that I always imagine. I actually, uh, while leaving the Philippines the other day, uh, we had a meeting with Connect Institute team. And I was telling them that uh, one of the things that I'm dreaming to see in Jannah is organizing Connecting the Pearls, the final Connecting the Pearls conference in Jannah. Where, oh yeah, yeah, where, yeah, I'm imagining Sheikh, where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the speaker, and we are all the volunteers, uh, and and we are all listening, and we are all the students. Um, one of the wishes that I wanted to see in Jannah, we uh, actually Mufti Mink shared it with me once in the Philippines. We were drinking coffee at the airport before heading to another destination. And I told, after, after he drank the coffee, he prayed to the brother, uh, may Allah, or somebody prayed like, may Allah feed you coffee from Jannah. So Mufti Ming said, that would be called Jannah Chino, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I remember so, that. I so remember he wanted the stuff too, you know, you see. It's for the sheikh. Mashallah, mashallah. I remember the Jannah Chino bit, but I want to ask you, will there be chickens in Jannah? Because for a barbecue, you're going to need chicken. <laughs> okay, Habib, you know, mashallah, it's beautiful. Alhamdulillah, beautiful, beautiful. Just like...